Hey guys, what's going on? This is uh, Mike here from Wikia, and you guys are tuned into another Wikia Stars Showcase. Uh, today we're going to be talking about large-scale shooters. Uh, today with me I have two experts from our uh, respective Wikias here. We've got uh, Sactage and uh, Technocide. And which Wikis are you guys from? I'm from the Call of Duty Wiki. Uh, hey there. <laughs> And uh, so I guess we sort of, sort of uh, explain what lo we mean by large-scale shooter, and it's sort of more along the lines of a battlefield or planet side two, that kind of thing. Uh, do you guys have uh, experience with these games? I know that uh, Call of Duty and Halo feel like they're a little different, but you know, maybe you guys have experience in the same field. I started playing FPSs. I my first FPS was Battlefield Bad Company uh, on my PS3. Okay. I got that the day my PS3 came out. Uh, and I've been a Battlefield fan uh, since that. I've played a bit of Planet Side 2 with my friend, uh, although it's sort of hard since it's such a gigantic game. <laughs> Playing it without friends is hard. Definitely, yeah. Um, other than that, that's, those are only the really, you know, two I've done, Battlefield and Planet Side, but they're super fun. Uh, I've played Battlefield here and there with my friends, but unfortunately I haven't even uh, had the chance to play Planet Side 2. I guess sort of in that vein, too. I mean, you guys are really experienced with shooters, you know, the map designs, like, kind of the core of the game in a lot of ways, and I don't know if uh, offhand you'd have an opinion, but what do you guys think makes a good, like, map or level for a large-scale shooter like this? I think the maps, really, like, they need to be spaced out well enough that, you know, like, all the different objectives, like, you know, flags, say, in Battlefield for Domination, or, like, the crates for Rush, um, I think that, you know, those need to be spaced out in such a way that it's not like, you know, the enemies are spawning and they have to run, like, a very short distance, you know, drive a tank like 10 meters and they're already there, but mm -hmm. I also don't think they, sh you know, need to be like so far away that, you know, the defending team could say have like a row of like three snipers who can just pick off everyone who's coming. Um, so I think it really, it like the best balance is, you know, like just the length between different objectives that you know, that has to be nice and uh, not like not like a set value, but something that's you know that's reasonable, especially for the map. And then I think also uh, they need to be able to like work in like you know like sniping spots and vehicles and all that stuff uh, in a way that it sort of blends together. And nothing is too overpowered. Yeah, I completely agree. Spacing is definitely a fundamental part of uh, large map designs, uh, where so much like you have the space to uh, if you have a vehicle be able to enjoy the space, but you're not driving at 10 meters and you have to turn around and drive 10 meters back. <laughs> Um, yeah. But at the same time, I think another important thing is balance, like the um, the positioning of I don't know powerful weapons or um, vehicles. So then you don't have say half the team in really powerful vehicles, and then half the team who are just cannon fodder. Mm -hmm. That's a good point, actually, to bring up too the idea about uh, I guess pickups on the map because I mean a lot of these large scale shooters, some of them don't have it, and some of them do. And it's yeah, uh, yeah it's kind of interesting point to bring up. Uh, you guys have a favorite map that you can think of offhand from sort of any game like this? Oh boy, uh, <laughs> Battlefield Bad Company Two. There mm -hmm. was one map. I want to say it was Valparaiso. Okay. I want to say that's what it was called. It was, it was, it was a rush map. So you know you'd have the attackers spawn, the defenders had to you know defend their two gold crates or whatever. Right. Or MCOM stations, what whatever it was. Um, <laughs> and essentially, you know, the attackers. It was like an island. It was like you know, it was on the coast, and there was essentially, you know, the attackers would spawn, and then they'd have this road that would go, you know, along to the right, and then you could drive onto this island. Okay. Um, where that's where the first uh, defending point was. And, you know, the attackers would have, like, a UE, and then, you know, um, and then the defenders would have a bunch of AA guns and stuff like that, and then what? The part after that was, like, a little, like, uphill sort of town uh, hmm. that was you know that was really fun to defend and then past that it was like this big like open power station sort of thing and like, that's probably right. my favorite map of all time uh, okay. that was super fun to play on especially with the helicopters Halo doesn't really have a lot of big maps but Ghost Recon uh, Future Soldier I remember it had quite hmm. a few not massive scale maps but it had quite spacious maps being as it was just uh, foot soldiers um, and I can't remember the name of the map, but it was a uh, sort of like a sandstorm village. It was okay. really well spaced. There was quite enough space uh, for the teams to be separated far enough, but um, also close enough to the objectives for there to be enough conflict between the two teams. You guys actually brought up a good point too, just vehicles and what a huge role vehicles play in games like this. Because I know, like, you know, Call of Duty is a little tighter. The maps are a little smaller, so there's no room for like you know tanks and that sort of thing. 
So I guess that's one of the things is that I remember playing a lot of Battlefield, and when you would have somebody who was really good with like piloting a helicopter and they had a gunner, they could like dominate the whole other team if the other team didn't know how to take care of it. And I was wondering if you guys had any thoughts about like sort of new vehicles in games, for example, something like Titanfall, where we're going to have these huge robots wandering around the map that you know have all kinds of crazy powers, but and how that plays into it. I really can't wait to get Titanfall just to see how this actually plays in because it's, it's completely different to other vehicles where it's just yeah you know, you've got a limitation of uh, let's say with a tank where you can you're a flat vehicle with uh, two tracks you can only go uphill downhill over certain terrains. And right. um, then where you, you're a helicopter, you're limited to the skies only, circling around. Um, I think that v- robot vehicles would be quite cool because you have the sort of um, maneuverability and agility of uh, by people like the normal foot soldier. You mm-hmm. also have the heavy armor and quite high power, um, heavy power weapons of a vehicle. So I think it would be quite cool to see how that plays out. Uh, yeah, I think like with Titanfall and the mechs, I think that's going to like definitely change the combat a lot because you know instead of like we're in battlefield let's say you know someone's like you know an enemy like t90 rolls in your base none of the foot soldiers are going to stand around and you know like be near it you you know we think someone's going to engineer is going to come up and try and blow it up something like that something like that right whereas with titanfall you know it's everyone's going to be you know like the, the mechs are going to be next to the foot soldiers and the foot soldiers are going to have ways to combat the mechs and the you mm-hmm. know all that different stuff so i i think um you know, it's, instead of like just being like a tank or something like that, it's like the mechs are almost like an extension of the foot soldier itself. Yeah, I think one thing we've seen from a lot of the gameplay videos so far has been like the regular foot soldiers are just so maneuverable. You can actually get around those like huge robots and sort of you know outmaneuver them and sabotage them. It seems like uh, when the guy just sort of ran up and pulled them out of the cockpit and. A lot of the gameplay seems to have like rocket launchers that lock onto them, and it seems like I mean I haven't played it, so I can't say, but it seems like they found a pretty good way to balance, you know, you being a foot soldier fighting a guy in a huge walking tank. But yeah, yeah. So what else do we have here? Um, after the vehicles, we were also talking about how these large scale maps they really require like good teamwork because there's just so much ground to cover that one person can't really hold a whole area by themselves, you know. And I guess one of the questions was, how incentivized do you guys think teamwork should be in these games? Like, should players be given points or rewards? Or do you think players should just sort of know to do that themselves? I think that it needs to be incentivized, at least um, at least for the people who aren't veterans of the game. Because, mm. like, at least with Battlefield, I know that, you know, you, you put in, like, let's say you have a 64... Uh, v64 uh, game, right? You know, 64 players versus 64 players. You put into four-man squads, and really, you know, it's you really have to work with your squad if you want to do any, you know, if you want to do good. I mean, you know, because you can, you know, if you die, you can spawn on your other squad members. You can spawn right in their vehicles, all that stuff, and then, mm-hmm. you know, you get you get extra points for say reviving one of your squad members or you know helping them uh, kill something, you know, like kill assist or you know right. depression stuff like that. Um, that's really good, but I mean, I because I know that like some of my friends who they only played COD, and then you know they tried Battlefield. They're like, oh well, this is hard. I'm like, well, it's because you're not working with your team. I'm sitting there. I'm like, guys, I'm like, come on, like let's go move up. And they're like, oh no, like I want to stay back here and snipe. I'm like, right, yeah. it doesn't work <laughs> like that. You have mm-hmm. to, you know, I, you have to. I think people definitely have to be given rewards, uh, to get them to work with the team. You know, be it even like. Even if it's just small bonuses, that's even fine. You know, like 10, 20 points here and there, because that still adds up, and that still, you know, gets your score higher. Uh, I guess this is a good point for you too, Tech, in that uh, Halo does have uh, vehicles and all this sort of thing, but do you think people can still lone wolf effectively in, like, Halo, or is teamwork as important there as well, too? In an ideal world, everyone will be playing teamwork in Halo, but <laughs> unfortunately that's not the case. Uh, yeah, it's definitely easy to lone wolf and I'll admit that I frequently do it when I go online <laughs> because it's really hard to communicate with other people they have, don't have a microphone or those who do have a microphone you don't want to have a microphone um, right. yeah teamwork doesn't seem to be sort of an, uh, an innate ability um, that there needs to be incentive to force it on people because in, when you've got large uh, map um, objective based like objective based um, game modes, it's definitely down to team mode, and, um, uh, team play, uh, mm-hmm. whether you win these games or not. Because you can't just expect to have one person just run, grab the flag, and then run back. Because he's not going to be able to survive an onslaught of uh, bullets flying at him from the opposition. Um, 
so yeah, it's really unfortunate that we don't get as much team uh, team players we should. But um, hopefully, yeah, with more incentives, that would be pushed upon, and make it makes gaming so much better when you've got. Right. Yeah, definitely agree with you on that point. It's always nice when you're kind of moving as a unit as opposed to sort of getting picked apart individually. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I guess on that topic, too, um, this sort of goes forward. I mean, the Battlefield 4, uh, they're t- talking about commander mode in this, which is sort of the new mode where you're kind of like this sort of puppet master overlord guy that looks at the map and helps deploy airstrikes and all this other stuff. Uh, what do you guys think of that? Um, I thought it was, it's really cool to see that kind of gameplay. I, I like the idea of it, and... Um, Right. There are a couple of questions I have for it. Like they said that uh, assets would be based on how well um, the team is doing, which kind of makes me a little bit worried because it means that if you've got like a really really good team, they're just going to keep getting better and uh, better assets and just do even better and dominate you completely from the start. But um, I think I think it's it's really good as well because it's bringing in PC and uh, tablets into the same world as consoles because uh, someone who's on the tablet can play as the commander. Right. And I really like that uh, cross cross platform game. It's definitely something that I'd like to see more. I think it's a brilliant idea as long as you know you have a good commander. Uh, <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. That's definitely you know that could be one of the major flaws of it. You know, you have someone who just jumps in the commander spot and they suck. I mean, yes. Uh, you, I'm pretty sure you can you know like you can as a team you can vote to kick out the commander if he's not doing what he should be. But you know, <laughs> yeah, that's that's still like that that takes. Some time, you know, and everyone really should be working, you know, as like a sort of asynchronous unit where, you know, the commander is giving you all the orders and then, you know, all the soldiers are following them. Not that, you know, the soldiers have to stop, like, vote to kick out the commanders. A new commander jumps in. Hopefully that one's good. If right. he's not, the process repeats itself. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, I mean, if, even if, you know, if the commander is just not as effective as he could be, because, I mean, it, it's going to take time for anyone to learn how to do that. Uh-huh. Um so, you know, and like, what if you have a match where no one's a really good commander on your team and the other team is a stellar one, you know, what happens then? Like, you're sort of screwed at that point. I haven't played around with it, but it's a good point to make in that it'll definitely take people, I think, some time to get used to using the commander mode. And, I mean, you're going to have to worry about that while you're trying to rush to the uh, airstrip to get planes because everyone's stealing them from you, too. It's just too stressful. <laughs> um... I guess um, something we haven't talked about yet for a next-gen game is uh, Destiny, which I think tech, you know a lot about. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. And where do you think that falls in sort of this discussion? Is it sort of large-scale, or is it kind of like middle of the road? Uh, I, I wouldn't know where you'd put it, because it seems that the maps are unlimited. Like, it's, it's sort of like a borderlands where you just keep walking and walking and walking, and eventually, I guess, you'd just sort of end up in the same place. <laughs> um, or reach the border of it, but that has shown like multiplayer um, capabilities, and so I'm going to assume that they're going to incorporate these massive maps again. Um, so, yeah, I guess there would be huge, um, huge maps. There's going to be vehicles, definitely. You've seen that in E3 gameplay. But no, yeah, that one is looking pretty cool. I mean, I've I've only been okay on the Halo games. Sorry, it's uh, <laughs> my uh, my problem. But uh, yeah, I'm literally looking forward to Destiny. It looks pretty cool. Uh, but let's see. I guess uh, we can probably wrap it up, but um, the last question I'd ask you guys is, for like large-scale shooters, what's, I guess, which one next-gen one is the one you're looking forward to the most right now? <laughs> uh, Destiny, obviously, is primary. And maybe the, the Division, if, you can say, if you're considering Destiny as a, a large, large play, um, FPS, and yeah, Des- uh, Destiny and the, the Division are probably my two full front ones. Cool, yeah, the Division's a pretty cool choice. I actually I haven't paid a lot of attention to that, but I, the buzz yeah, on it's it looks, really good. It looks really good. Like, I like the idea. I've always loved Tom Clancy games, and um, the, the, the design of this one, it's the same as um, with Battlefield 4, where they're trying to incorporate um, tablets and cross-platform ga- here, gaming again. Uh, so I think there's going to be a lot of teamwork uh, Crafted teamwork playing that at the same Destiny. So, yeah, he's yeah. doing, doing what I'm keeping my eye on. Okay, right on. Yeah, and I, I like your uh, sort of enthusiasm about the uh, tablet and the cross platform stuff. I know a lot of people are a little yeah, cagey tablets, about but it, but it, it's, it's good it's to see some optimism. <laughs> <laughs> and how about you, Sackage? I'm probably most excited for Battlefield 4, mostly because, I mean, I love Battlefield. What It really what sort of started me with any FPS was the first one I owned. Right. Um, you know, I mean, 
I love Battlefield 3. Uh, I'm very... <laughs> I'm not that good at it, but I love it. <laughs> same, uh, same thing here, yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, I play with my... I go over to my friend's house all the time, and I play it in his PC. I have played it on mine. Um, and I'm really looking forward to that, because I just like how big it is and how much it really depends on teamwork. Um, mm-hmm. That's probably my favorite part, you know, like... There have been times where I've just gone to a random, you know, like a random squad with three other guys, and you know, we all have mics and we all, you know, plan out what we're going to do, and we do it, and we're, you know, top four of the match, and it's really, really good. Um, so I mean, that's that's like my favorite part about gaming when I can, you know, go and cooperate with people who I've never seen before. Um, right. I've made a bunch of friends out of it. It's it's you know, it's probably my favorite thing to do. Excellent. All right. Well, that should about do it for us, guys. Uh, thanks again for uh, coming over here and talking with us, or via the internet. But uh, yeah, <laughs> definitely appreciate it. Yeah, and uh, yeah, we'll uh, check out the Halo wiki and the Call of Duty wiki if you aren't already, and if you're not, you should be. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks again, guys, and we—I'm uh, sure we'll talk to you again. <laughs>